Republicans are serious about cutting appropriations. Uh, the governor might not like this, but I bet they do it. I bet you that they get to 50 or 60 billion. I don't think they'll get to 100. But if you look at appropriations, they put defense off and things that we know they're not going to cut, like the FBI. These are some really serious, deep cuts. Some programs will get 20, 30 percent cuts, and I think they'll do it. They're really on, I mean, they won't, probably won't become law because I don't think the Senate will go along. But that'll be an interesting dynamic if the House passes and send them over there. Uh, second thing is that I think is just completely shocking. There's not a single person in this room that could predict anything like this would have happened, and that is that Crapo and Colburn signed on to tax increases. That is enormous. And especially for someone who hangs out with Republicans, the antipathy toward increased taxes is shocking. It, it, it passes any human understanding that Republicans are so you know, opposed to taxation. Uh, so the fact that Coburn, uh, there are not very many who are more conservative than Coburn, uh, would sign on to something that involved tax increase, I think is a big deal. Third, I think Ryan is a key here. Um, Boehner's a key, too, but I think Ryan really understands this stuff. He's spoken here at Brookings. All of us have read his material. Uh, most people don't really like his solutions, but they're real solutions, uh, and he's a real leader, and I think the, he, he will force the House and force the House leadership, if necessary, to do something serious. And then the most important thing, potentially, is the philosophy of the Republican Party. I mean, this situation is made for Republicans to do what they want to do, which is reduce the size of government. Now, they love to vote for increased spending so they can be reelected, but intellectually, Republicans talk ad nauseum about a smaller government, and what better situation to actually do it than the one that we're in now? But there are some indications on the other side, too. I think one of the most important is the rule that was just passed in the House that Republicans have favored all along. Uh, I think they had a mathematical genius that figured this out, and what they figured out was if you increase spending by a trillion dollars, that really is a trillion dollars will increase the deficit by a trillion dollars. But if you cut taxes by a trillion dollars, that's not really a trillion dollars. <laughs> so taxes, tax cuts are exempted from the budget rules, which is just bizarre. And the thing that really bothers me about it is that is one of the most effective budget process mechanisms that Congress ever invented. It actually did have some effect, and now it's been more or less ruined. Um, the final thing is, I think, really important. Uh, uh, notwithstanding the fact that I think Ryan is a great leader. The leadership on both the House and the Senate side, I think, are really untested in something this dramatic that will really take very, very serious compromise and giving in on both sides. And especially now with the new Republican membership in the House. I was in the House uh, when I was a staffer on the Ways and Means Committee when there were 75 freshmen in the House and they were all uh, wired uh, and they were going to change Washington, and by golly, Washington was never going to change them. Compromise, no, we're not going to compromise. It's defeat, compromise is defeat, and so forth. And there are a lot of freshmen that feel that way in the House. And the only solution known to man or God is great leadership. Now, no matter what you think about Newt, Newt was God in 1995 and 1996, and Newt really, really ran hurt over Republicans in the House. I can remember... Uh, you may remember Republicans shut down the government. Clinton was absolutely cleaning Republicans' clock. And Gingrich went back for about the 400th time to get a deal. He got a deal. He brought it back to the House, a big session with all the House members there, very dramatic session. Newt gave, I would say, a 20-minute talk about the, you know, what was in the deal. It was a brilliant talk. And when he got through, he looked at him and said, and, no, and he said, and this is the best we can do. It may not be the best deal, but this is the best deal we're going to get. And if you don't take it, you can find yourselves another speaker. Mm -hmm. And they took it, which I think when people went in that room, very few people thought they were going to take it. So that's what it takes. And maybe, maybe Boehner's going to take out that way. Alice is very optimistic about Boehner. Um, maybe McConnell will turn out that way. I don't know. But it isn't clear now that the leadership that is needed will really be present. So I am not optimistic.